Starlink is a satellite constellation development project underway by SpaceX, to develop a low-cost, high-performance satellite bus and requisite customer ground transceivers to implement a new space-based Internet communication system. By 2017, SpaceX had submitted regulatory filings to launch nearly 12,000 satellites to orbit by the mid-2020s. SpaceX also plans to sell satellites that use a satellite bus that may be used for military, scientific, or exploratory purposes. By November 2018, SpaceX had received regulatory approval to deploy nearly 12,000 satellites over the coming decade, but also revealed through a new regulatory filing that they want to operate the initial 1584 Starlink satellites in a third orbital shell, at 550 km altitude, while the higher and lower orbital shells at approximately 1,200 km and approximately 340 km would be filled only in later years of the operation of the constellation development began in 2015 and prototype test flight satellites were launched on the 22nd of February 2018 a second set of test satellites and the first large deployment of a piece of the constellation is slated for 2019 on a launch no earlier than net May 2019 initial commercial operation of the constellation could begin in 2020 the SpaceX satellite development facility in Redmond Washington houses the research development and on-orbit control operations for the satellite internet project topic history the communication satellite network SpaceX envisions was publicly announced in January 2015 with the projected design capability to support sufficient bandwidth to carry up to 50% of all backhaul communications traffic and up to 10% of local internet traffic in high density cities CEO Elon Musk said that there is significant unmet demand for low-cost global broadband capabilities the opening of the SpaceX satellite development facility, in Redmond was announced by SpaceX in January 2015, to develop and build out the new communication network. At the time, the Seattle area office planned to initially hire approximately 60 engineers, and potentially 1,000 people over the next several years. There were 45 open positions in October 2015. The company operated in 2,800 square meters square feet of leased space by late 2016, and by January 2017 had taken on a 3,800 square meters square feet second facility, both in Redmond. By January 2016, the company was planning to have two prototype satellites flying in 2016, and have the initial satellite constellation in orbit and operational by approximately 2020. In the event, however, by 2017 design changes obviated the original two test satellites. They were used only in ground testing. And the launch of two revised satellites was moved to 2018. In July 2016, SpaceX had also acquired a 740 square meters, 8000 square feet creative space in Irvine, CA, Orange County. SpaceX job listings indicated the Irvine office would include signal processing, RFIC, and ASIC development for the satellite program. By October 2016, SpaceX had developed the initial satellites that they hoped to launch and test in 2017, but they were focusing on a significant business challenge of achieving a sufficiently low cost design for the user equipment, aiming for something that can ostensibly install easily at end user premises for approximately $200. Overall, SpaceX president Gwynne Shotwell said the project remained in the design phase as the company seeks to tackle issues related to user terminal cost. Deployment, if carried out, would not be until late in this decade or early in the next. In November 2016, SpaceX filed an application with the FCC for a non-geostationary orbit satellite system in the fixed satellite service using the KU and CAR frequency bands. By March 2017, SpaceX filed with the FCC plans to field an additional orbital shell of more than 7,500 V-band satellites in non-geosynchronous orbits to provide communications services in an electromagnetic spectrum that has not previously been heavily employed for commercial communications services, called the V-band Low Earth Orbit constellation. It was proposed to consist of 7,518 satellites to follow the earlier proposed 4,425 satellites that would function in CAR and KU band. The March 2017 plan called for SpaceX to launch test satellites of the initial type in both 2017 and 2018, and begin launching the operational Constellation Sats in 2019. Full build out of the constellation was then not expected to be completed until 2024, at which time there were expected to be 
4,425 satellites into orbit around the Earth, operating in 83 planes, at fairly low altitudes of between 1,110 km and 1,325 km. By September 2017, the planned number of sats in each orbital shell had not changed, but the altitude of each constellation became explicit. The larger group 7,518 sats would operate at 340 kilometers, 210 miles altitude, while the smaller group, 4425 sats, would orbit at 1200 kilometers, 750 miles altitude. Some controversy arose in 2015 to 2017 with regulatory authorities on licensing the communication spectrum for these large constellations of satellites. The traditional and historical regulatory rule for satellites licensing COM spectrum has been that satellite operators could launch a single spacecraft to meet their in-service deadline from the regulator, a policy seen as allowing an operator to block the use of valuable radio spectrum for years without deploying its fleet." By 2017, the U.S. regulatory authority had set a six-year deadline to have an entire large constellation deployed to comply with licensing terms. The international regulator, International Telecommunication Union, proposed in mid-2017 an international guideline that would be considerably less restrictive. In September 2017, both Boeing and SpaceX petitioned the US FCC for a waiver of the six-year rule, but that was not granted by early 2019. SpaceX filed legal documents in 2017 seeking to trademark the name Starlink for their satellite broadband network. By March 2017, SpaceX had filed regulatory paperwork to launch a total of approximately 12,000 satellites in two orbital shells, including 7,518 sats to provide communications in the little used V band in very low Earth orbit. SpaceX filed documents in late 2017 with the US FCC to clarify their space debris mitigation plan. SpaceX will implement an operations plan for the orderly de orbit of satellites nearing the end of their useful lives, roughly five to seven years, at a rate far faster than is required under international standards. Satellites will de orbit by propulsively moving to a disposal orbit from which they will re enter the Earth's atmosphere within approximately one year after completion of their mission. In March 2018, the FCC issued SpaceX approval with some conditions. SpaceX would need to obtain a separate approval from the ITU. The FCC did agree with NASA for asking SpaceX for an even higher deorbiting reliability than the NASA's previous standard for itself of reliably deorbiting 90% of the satellites after their missions are complete. In May 2018, SpaceX expected the total cost of development and build out of the Constellation to approach $10 billion. In mid 2018, SpaceX reorganized the Satellite Development Division in Redmond and fired several senior management in the process. They also consolidated all their Seattle area operations with a move to Redmond Ridge Corporate Center, leaving the facility they started work in during 2015. In November 2018, SpaceX received U.S. regulatory approval to deploy 7,518 broadband satellites, in addition to the 4,425 satellites that were approved earlier. SpaceX's initial 4,425 satellites had been requested in the initial regulatory filings to orbit at altitudes of 1,110 km to 1,325 km, well above the ISS. The new approval was for the proposal to add a very low Earth orbit NGSO non -geostationary satellite orbit constellation, consisting of 7,518 satellites operating at altitudes from 335 km to 346 km, below the ISS. Also in November, SpaceX made regulatory filings with the US FCC to request the ability to alter its previously granted license to operate approximately 1,500 of the 4,425 satellites approved for operation at 1,150 km 710 miles to a new lower shell of the constellation to only 550 km 340 miles orbital altitude. In a new regulatory filing that same month, SpaceX revealed that the initial 1584 Starlink satellites to be launched, beginning with the first large deployment on a launch slated for no earlier than net May 2019, will operate in a third orbital shell, a 550 km orbit, while the higher and lower orbits at approximately 1200 km and approximately 340 km will be used later once a considerably larger deployment of satellites becomes possible in the later years of the deployment process. 
The deployment of the first 1584 sats will be into 40 orbital planes of 66 sats each, but with a requested lower minimum elevation angle than that other two orbital shells, 25 degrees rather than 40 degrees. In February 2019, a sister company of SpaceX, SpaceX Services, Inc., filed a request with the U.S. Federal Communications Commission to request a license for the operation of up to 1 million fixed satellite Earth stations that will communicate with its non geostationary orbit satellite Starlink system. Topic Services Topic Global Broadband Internet SpaceX has articulated the explicit goal to provide broadband Internet connectivity to underserved areas of the planet, as well as provide competitively priced service to urban areas. Moreover, SpaceX has indicated that the positive cash flow from selling satellite Internet services would be necessary to fund SpaceX Mars plans. In early 2015, two space entrepreneurs announced Internet satellite ventures in the same week. In addition to SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announcing the project that would later be named Starlink, serial entrepreneur Richard Branson announced an investment in OneWeb, a similar constellation with approximately 700 satellites that had already procured communication frequency licenses for their broadcast spectrum. After the failures of previous satellite to consumer space ventures, satellite industry consultant Roger Rush said in 2015, It's highly unlikely that you can make a successful business out of this. Musk publicly acknowledged that business reality, and indicated in mid-2015 that while endeavoring to develop this technically complicated space-based communication system he wants to avoid overextending the company and stated that they are being measured in the pace of development. Nevertheless, internal documents leaked in February 2017 indicate that SpaceX expected more than $30 billion in revenue by 2025 from its satellite constellation, while revenues by its launch business were expected to reach $5 billion in the same year. In February 2015, financial analysts questioned established geosynchronous orbit communications satellite fleet operators as to how they intend to respond to the competitive threat of SpaceX, Google, and OneWeb LEO communication satellites. In October, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell indicated that while development continues the business case for the long-term rollout of an operational satellite network was still in an early phase. In 2015, court documents indicate that SpaceX had engaged in collaboration with wireless chip maker Broadcom. Five key engineers subsequently left to join SpaceX leading to a lawsuit filed by Broadcom alleging that SpaceX stole our best minds. In March, an Orange County judge denied Broadcom's multiple restraining order requests. Topic. Extending to use beyond Earth In the long term, SpaceX intends to develop and deploy a version of the satellite communication system that would be used on Mars. In the mid-term, SpaceX is interested in the SATCOM system on Earth generating revenue that would be helpful in providing capital for the company's Mars transport project. Topic. Satellite hardware. The Internet communication satellites are expected to be in the smallsat class of 100 to 500 kg 220 to minus 1,100 pounds mass, which were intended to be in low Earth orbit (LEO) at an altitude of approximately 1,100 km (680 miles). However, SpaceX ultimately decided to keep the satellites at a relatively low 550 km (340 miles) due to concerns about the space environment. Initial plans as of January 2015 were for the constellation to be made up of approximately 4,000 cross-linked satellites, more than twice as many operational satellites as were in orbit in January 2015. The satellites will employ optical inter-satellite links and phased array beam forming and digital processing technologies in the Ku and Ka bands, according to documents filed with the U.S. Federal Communications Commission FCC. While specifics of the phased array technologies have been disclosed as part of the frequency application, SpaceX enforced confidentiality regarding details of the optical inter satellite links other than that they will utilize frequencies above 10,000 GHz. The satellites will be mass produced, at a much lower cost per unit of capability than existing satellites. Musk said, We're going to try and do for satellites what we've done for rockets. In order to revolutionize space, we have to address both satellites and rockets. Smaller satellites are crucial to lowering the cost of space-based Internet and communications. 
In February 2015, SpaceX asked the FCC to consider future innovative uses of the car band spectrum before the FCC commits to 5G communications regulations that would create barriers to entry, since SpaceX is a new entrant to the satellite communications market. The SpaceX Non-Geostationary Orbit NGSO communications satellite constellation will operate in the high-frequency bands above 24 GHz where steerable Earth station transmit antennas would have a wider geographic impact and significantly lower satellite altitudes magnify the impact of aggregate interference from terrestrial transmissions." The system will not compete with the Iridium satellite constellation, which is designed to link directly to handsets. Instead, it will be linked to flat user terminals the size of a pizza box, which will have phased array antennas and track the satellites. The terminals can be mounted anywhere, as long as they can see the sky. Internet traffic via a geostationary satellite has a minimum theoretical round trip latency of at least 477 milliseconds between user and ground gateway, but in practice, current satellites have latencies of 600 milliseconds or more. Starlink satellites would orbit at 1 30th to 1 105th of the height of geostationary orbits, and thus offer more practical Earth to sat latencies of around 25 to 35 milliseconds, comparable to or exceeding existing cable or fiber networks. Although transmitting a signal halfway around the globe takes at least 67 milliseconds at the speed of light, the system will use a peer to peer protocol claimed to be simpler than IPv6, though no details have been as yet released. Topic prototype development and testing SpaceX began flight testing their satellite technologies in 2018, with the launch of two test satellites. The two identical satellites were called Microsat 2A and Microsat 2B during development but were renamed Tintin A and Tintin B upon orbital deployment in February 2018. Two previously manufactured satellites, Microsat 1A and Microsat 1B were meant to be launched together as secondary payloads on one of the Iridium Next flights, but they were instead used for ground-based tests. Microsat 1A and 1B were originally slated to be launched into 625 km circular orbits at approximately 86.4 degrees inclination, and to include panchromatic video imager cameras to film image of Earth and the satellite, Microsat 2A and 2B were inserted into a 514 km orbit. Per FCC filings, they were intended to raise themselves to an 1,125 km orbit, the operational altitude for Starlink LEO satellites per the earliest regulatory filings. For unknown reasons, the satellites have not moved to the higher orbit, but could be related to SpaceX November 2018 revealed that they would like to operate an initial shell of tilde 1600 sats in the constellation at approximately 550 km orbital altitude. The satellites currently orbit in a circular low Earth orbit at about 500 km 310 miles altitude in a high inclination orbit for a planned 6 to 12 month duration. The satellites will communicate with three testing ground stations in Washington and California for short term experiments of less than 10 minutes duration, roughly daily. At the time of the June 2015 announcement, SpaceX had stated plans to launch the first two demonstration satellites in 2016, but the target date was subsequently moved out to 2018. As of October 2015, Microsat 2A and 2B were planned to be the first of up to eight prototype satellites to be flown before deployment of the operational constellation. The initial two test satellites were successfully launched to a sun-synchronous low-Earth orbit on of February 2018, and were renamed Tintin A and Tintin B in October 2018 SpaceX confirmed that the test satellites were working as expected and announced mid-2019 as target for initial launches of the Constellation. Topic. Competition and market effects In addition to the OneWeb constellation, announced nearly concurrently with the SpaceX constellation, a 2015 proposal from Samsung has outlined a 4,600 satellite constellation orbiting at 1,400 kilometers (900 miles) that could provide a zettabyte per month capacity worldwide, an equivalent of 200 gigabytes per month for 5 billion users of internet data. Telesat announced a smaller 117 satellite constellation and plans to deliver initial service in 2021. By October 2017, the expectation for large increases in satellite network capacity from emerging lower altitude broadband constellations caused market players to cancel investments in new geosynchronous orbit broadband comsats. Topic: See also Global Star, a low Earth orbit LEO satellite constellation for satellite phone and low speed data communications. 
Iridium Satellite Constellation, an operational constellation of 66 active LEO satellites used to provide global satellite phone service. OneWeb Satellite Constellation, a proposed LEO satellite constellation to provide global Internet broadband service to individual consumers as early as 2019. ORBCOMM, an operational constellation used to provide global asset monitoring and messaging services from its constellation of 29 LEO communications satellites orbiting at 775 km. Teledesic, a former 1990s venture to accomplish broadband satellite Internet services. Viasat Communications, offers an operational Internet service from four geostationary satellites. Laser communication in space, key technology used to establish the inter-satellite links of the Starlink constellation. <laughs> 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 <laughs>